Hey folks, Stripped to Fast Sands here. Um, I'm doing a quick tutorial to show you how you can take a model that you've created in ZBrush using multiple subtools uh, with the intention of taking it into Second Life. Each of these is a sculpty uh, suitable subtool. But you want to texture it outside of ZBrush. I don't particularly enjoy the poly painting method, and if like me you've got uh, a 3D navigator mouse. 3D mouse that you've bought specifically for using 3D models, it doesn't work in ZBrush, which I found quite annoying. So I've got a model ready, it's just nice and simple so that we'll be able to put textures on it and uh, show that they line up. So assuming you already know how to sculpt using subtools, and this is the point you're at, what you'll need to do now is use a plugin called Subtool Master which can be found on uh, the Pixelogic website along with most of the other plugins that I'm going to use and you merge them together using this button here I leave this unchecked, I'm not sure if that's necessary but I'll do so again and that combines my three subtools into this single object now, at this point, I'm going to save it because ZBrush likes to crash, as I'm sure some of you have found out. Um, let me just clear out this. In fact, no, I'll save over it. I'm going to save it as original object .ztl. And the reason I'm saving it at this point is because the issue with texturing these in outside programs is the UV map which tells it how to wrap the texture around the object is incorrect at this stage. Um, Second Life expects a sculpted texture to be a solid image which wraps around each individual piece. Uh, whereas if you've merged these together all it's seeing right now is exactly that a single image wrapped around the whole thing. But using this plugin, UV Master, we can fix that little issue. So what I'm going to do first is copy the UVs so that we can paste them back to this object later on. Let me just show you what happens if I export this as it is now. I'll save it as test object over the top of that one. Load it up into 3D Coat. I'm using the trial version at the moment which is fantastic. default values for the imports and when I paint onto any one of these you'll see it carries over to every single object because that's how they're being told to wrap the texture at the moment absolutely useless for us in most cases anyway so I'll get rid of that and go back to ZBrush UV Master. Copy UVs, most important, we'll need them later. And now we use the Unwrap All button to generate a proper UV that we can use. Now we export it again. Back over Test Object. Back into 3D Coat. File, Import, Model for Per Pixel Painting. object or each individual part of the object so let's see I'll do a little blue dot on that side and blue dots in the corners that's a lovely hole that was produced when I subdivided it hmm, actually I didn't subdivide it I'm surprised that holes there but it's not an issue in most cases Let's go around to the back. A bit of green. Now when I save out these this texture, for 
some reason uh, it f it needs to be flipped vertically to work in um, when you bring it back into ZBrush I find they always import upside down which isn't really very useful Okay, I think this will do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So I'm going to texture, export, diffuse map. Uh, I'll do it as a bitmap. I seem to be having trouble importing TGAs into ZBrush at the moment. Fill empty parts, sure, why not? And then I want to create my flipped version of the texture. So to save some time I'm just going to go edit all layers in external editor which is a nice neat feature of 3D Coat which takes it straight into Photoshop in this case. Um, it retains the layers as well. This layer here actually represents the object and is pretty it's the same shape as the UV map will be. And then there's the layer that I painted on top of. Um, if I wanted to I could paint changes in here and just by clicking save they'll automatically go back onto the model here but I need to save some time at the moment so I'll just go right ahead and flip that vertically let's get rid of that lower layer and I'll save that as flipped oh which was already there never mind there we go so that's the one I'm going to actually use on my ZBrush model oh and before I close this out I'll just show you that's the UV map that was generated by UV master more like a normal UV map should look so back into ZBrush texture import final texture flipped uh, texture map menu select it there we go let's just get this material off so <coughs> there you can see it's all aligned properly but at this stage it's still using the UV map that we generated for this texture here so next step is to take our texture and apply it as poly paint to this object so that we can retain it even after we restore our UVs from earlier Okay. Uh, we need to subdivide our object give us a nice smooth surface for our poly paint. I go up to 6, I don't bother going to 7 because it's more likely to crash their brush and slow things down. Poly paint menu and we're going to create poly paint from this texture by clicking poly paint from texture. Now the object is colorized. Now at this stage we can quite happily change the UV without affecting our texture at all. And to do that, first of all we're going to lower our subdivision back down to 1. ZBrush prefers it and will run a lot smoother. There we go. Don't worry about the texture going all blurry, it makes no difference, it still retains it. And we need to paste those UV UVs that we copied earlier back onto our merged object. Paste UVs. That's that done. Now we go to our subtools menu and use group split. Before I do that, I'm going to rename this object. Because I use Sculpty Maker in Second Life to uh, build my sculpties for me, my objects, Sculpty Maker has a limit. 
it puts a lot of information in the texture which it uses for position and size and if your name is too long then you go over the 63 character limit that Second Life has and it doesn't work, it doesn't generate the uh, names properly. So I'm just going to call this um, object for the moment. It really does have to be a very short name you use. But by doing that now, while it's still merged, when I group split and it separates the subtools back out, they'll neatly be named object, object 1 and object 2. Perfect. Although they've also got invisible. Let's turn them back on. Great. Now subdivision needs to go back up to the highest level. Hopefully I'm going to get away with turning them all up at the same time with the all hide button. Let's find out. There we go. Now we can see the details again. Now all we have to do is select each subtool New texture from Polypaint. And then when we go to export, it's going to automatically include those textures so we don't have to worry about checking that texture box. Um, I'm going to set them all back to the lower subdivision because quite often ZBrush will crash if I have it high when I do this export. You can still see the details because it's, it's in a texture now. And then if I load up my Z Sculpty Maps folder where these exports go to, click export. And it's generated nice neat object object one and object two textures and the relevant sculpt maps with all the information Sculpty Maker uses. Now hopefully these are sized correctly. You can check this vector, the last three numbers in here, and make sure the numbers are all above 0 0.01, which is the minimum Second Life size. If they're below that, then it won't position them correctly. It will just res them all out at the uh, smallest size possible. You can fix it in World and shape them manually, but I'm a bit lazy to do that. So at this point I'm going to load Second Life and show you that's worked. Scripts for Sculpty Reza, along with the Z Sculpty plugin, is available on uh, shinylife.com, along with a load of other great uh, ZBrush tutorials by Vlad. I forget his surname, but uh, thank you, Vlad, for getting me into ZBrush. Um, that's all our objects. I've tweaked my Sculpty Reza slightly. Usually it will only generate, it will res the objects using these sculpt maps, but I've tweaked mine to export the uh, texture names as well and it applies them. And I've also made it so it reses them a little bit larger to get ar uh, around that problem I just talked about, where they can be a bit too small. Okay, that's all in there. Click it. One final step, not only do my exports come in inside out, which I've already fixed inside Sculpty Maker, you'll see that the default is inside out, but you can quickly fix that in the object tab. But finally you need to flip the texture on the horizontal, and there we go. Blue dots, red lines, green circles, green dots, blue lines. So that's it. So the principle is, your UV's wrong, you merge your model, copy the UVs with UV Master, export it, paint it, save your texture, flip it vertically, bring it back into ZBrush, apply it, set it as poly paint, paste the UVs back onto your model, uh, split the groups, back to textures again from Polypaint and save it out. Simple as that. I hope somebody finds this useful. Uh, I know Mesh is just around the corner so it might not be useful for long but still. Enjoy!